Okay, I wasn't going to do a video, people, because I'm trying to stay focused. In terms of just whatever it is, okay? You have to remember, I'm tired much more these days. Because it's go, 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 pretty much go. I've been up since, oh, I don't know, 20 after 5, and it's already 20 after 7, so I've been going for the last two hours. And I'm thinking, 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 right? All the time thinking, you know how that goes. I'm trying to figure out my mode of attack in terms of on that going. Right? So many things I have to do. It's raining right now, so I don't have to worry about cutting the grass in the back. This guy next door was saying that the tarps that I laid down the city was complaining about it. Which, I told him, if you don't cover up the dirt the way I've been covering it up, the weeds, in, in it, it's just going to get out of control. And, like, you know, they don't care because... They don't care if they're morning glory seeds and they're buttercup seeds and, you know, the, the, west, the real pesty kind of weed flies into... Or that marrow that you know, goes through the ground with its rions, right, you know, not to mention its seeds. They don't care if it all blows into my side of the yard. I do, people, because I weed those out, right? So, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful that I can plant food next door. But, like, you know, he's saying, well, you know, do something with these tarps. And I'm like, yeah, okay, right, but you do realize, okay, like... If, if, you know, like, I'm not going to go out there every year trying to dig out the same damn weeds because they just get out of control for, you know, six months out of the year in terms of winter and fall or nobody does nothing. I mean, so, and it's, you know, it, garbage in the front on the ground when the garbage cans go out and stuff. You know, it's completely different than laying down tarps to control weeds. <laughs> But besides that point, I'm not too worried about it. But I do have to cut the back, right? Because we know the city has an impression to make to boost up the property values as houses sit empty up and down the fucking block, okay? And we know what's going to happen to a whole lot of those houses, including my own. So for as much as it, it's all about image, it really means nothing in the great grand scheme of things. So besides that point, you know, I'm trying to stay positive, right? So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, 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 and, you know, like I've mentioned in, in before, right? I'm boiling water, so as soon as my water is boiled, I'm going to go make myself another coffee, because I really am trying to get motivated here <coughs> with a good attitude, right? You see this right here? That cupboard, I want to get into that cupboard. Right, because, you know, but it's almost like I'd have to shorten my table, which is kind of complicated. Move my elk horns, antlers, my elk, I guess you could say antlers. All right, I kind of have a spot for them, but that ain't happening today. So I'm thinking, 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 and uh, I have to decide what I'm going to do with this trademark in terms of re-registering the American one for another 10 years, and then the Canadian one comes up in 2025. This is two, 50, every 15 years for Canada and every 10 years for the States. In, in a matrix of satanic activity that just pretty much devours everything in its path. So, you know, that's a big decision to make, right, people? You know, 21 years, you think I would have learned my lesson by now. So, this is, this is, so this is the relation, in relation to the title, because I think I'm going to call this one, Punjabis Need to Step Up. Or something like that. The Punjabi community where I live. I'm going to address the Punjabi community. Because uh, without them, 
where I am, right? I, I, I don't see too much happening in regards to a foundation, quote-unquote, because, you know, they're, uh, I guess you could say, a major voting block that controls the economy and much of what goes through it, right? Without their support, you're not going to get very far with anything unless, of course, you're already established. And, which brings me to the ones that are already established in terms of... Oh, there goes my water. You know, we'll just say community activism. Hmm. No, they're not interested in, I guess you could say, partnering up with the foundation to uh, push the envelope in regards to its mandate. Whether there's a federal trademark attached to it or not. If anything, the federal trademark probably intimidates them because as soon as you bring that into the fray, you're dealing with contracts and people are... Um, through my travels, I've learned... People are hesitant to sign up on contracts, right? Unless, of course, it's really enticing. If it's not enticing, then they don't they don't want to put their John Henrys and make that kind of commitment. I didn't know that when I founded the foundation and got the trademark and got all the licensing agreements and contracts. It's just simple little things, $3 a year. I mean, what the hell, right? It was all based on principle before it was on money. Uh, but, you know, it was enough to educate me on the hesitancy of individuals wanting to put their John Henry down in a legal sense that's binding to promote community activism, especially if they're already established and they don't need you, right? Or they're just not interested because they have their own agendas over there, which, you know, is just human nature. So there's my, my water boiling. Hold on. Okay. Anyway, it's Monday. It's that, you know, holiday, right? I think it's May 24th, right? 2021. So anyway, okay. So, you know, talking is different than writing. Although, you write as if you were talking in terms of the bird flew over the nest versus the bird was flying over the nest. Okay? I'm trying to teach Andre to hear the difference between the actions. That's where saying, talking and writing, you have to fill in that gray area. Okay? And then thinking is different than writing and talking. So what I'm trying to say is, as I'm sitting here thinking, 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 I think, oh, it's so easy just to get on, you know, camera and talk about it. And, People will understand what you're saying because, you know, it's point blank, right? Not necessarily so. So what I am trying to say, though, is this is a video directed to the Punjabi community to step up to the plate, to start stepping up to the plate. Because if they don't start stepping up to the plate, right, then... There's an elite class within their ranks as an ethnic group that are dooming, dooming millions of their kind to, oh, you know, starvation. People in India are starting to starve because the farmers are being wiped out. Let me say, I respect farmers. My grandfather was a farmer. Okay? So I'm going to side with the farmers just by default. Okay? And why the elite Punjabi wouldn't support their own farmers is beyond comprehension. In terms of outside of, it's that greed. 
for wealth, I guess, in however form it comes, whether it's topaz ornaments, right, or whether it's gold bullions, or whether it's property in terms of let's play Monopoly and own all these houses and blah blah blah, right? outside of community wealth. Now there's that gray line with the Punjabi community. In one way, they're like one big beehive, right? Where they are birds of a feather who stick together. Or bees with wings that fly together, you know, in terms of a beehive. But ultimately, they're one big flock. Even though they have their infighting. And they're different, different religions within their ethnic heritage. Um, so being that I live in Canada, mainly in a Punjabi community, and have for years, most of my life, really. Not as condensed as I have been living within the community since I've been living in Surrey, right? But there's always been people from India in my life. My mother used to rent houses from them when I was growing up. She used to paint and fix some wallpaper and do some of the things that I do. I wasn't into wallpaper, but I was into greenhouses and pots. Right. So, but right now, we're at a crossroads in society. I really do believe that we're in a crossroads. And for the life of me, I don't know why the Punjabi community would want to fall for the old okie dokie and let their sellout, basically, because all I can do is kind of relate them to the black community in the United States, right, in terms of that, well, one, institutional racism and the sellouts naming no names, but like a Jesse Jackson or a L. Sharpton, Lewis Vark, and that kind of thing, right? Where the real warriors, like Malcolm X, right, who wouldn't necessarily say Martin Luther King, but he definitely was a sacrifice, right, paid the ultimate price to low, low, the masses back to sleep through the sellout pastors that basically remained in terms of a national representative to that ethnic heritage. And in this case, it would be black people in the United States. <clears throat> like I said before, the B.C. government, British Columbia can Canadian government, they race bait the Punjabi community, the Indian community, the Hindu community out here, right? They race bait them people. And they use their um, gurus to do it, to sway and influence the family, to follow the protocol as to whatever it is the government is feeding them. And they're just being, they're allowing themselves to be uh, spoon fed, right? There is no pushback of any kind from the Punjabi community out here in terms of what our governments have been doing. Absolutely none. You have a lone soldier up on some video hosting site talking on about the real truth of what's going on in India. Right? And the ones that are in more fortunate situations like in Canada where they don't have to face 55 degrees Celsius 
well, it goes up to 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit in the summertime in India. That's why a lot of people are leaving India, because it's getting too hot. Not to mention what food they can grow is being destroyed now because of the p political atmosphere of what our governments, our global governments are doing to the general population to which the Punjabis in British Columbia, Canada don't seem to think that it will ultimately affect them and to hell with everybody else including their own people in their own country. This is what I'm thinking about at 7 o'clock in the morning trying to figure how I can break that glass ceiling to get through to the Punjabis out here that they need to start stepping up to the plate and take their wealth their strength in terms of a collective and their um, intelligence and expertise and patience and fortitude and just everything that makes them work collectively to move along forward versus falling back backwards and use it for the greater good of mankind not just for the Punjabi community but for mankind. I just don't see it happening, people. I just don't see it happening. I see a lot of people, I don't want to call them sellouts, but I just wonder how they can honestly think that they are safe from the carnage that is going on around them without lifting a finger to fight back unless, of course, they participate to encourage it to happen because they know that they're safe and they won't be targeted like other people and ethnic groups are being targeted via through that global government that uh, is changing society. Like, I think how many years has to go by before they really fully realize that whatever freedoms that they thought that they may have had are being chipped away at, right? Unless, of course, they're in bed with the devil and that's what they want. They want families such as mine to be subject to gang stalking, targeting of teeth and organs and all that other shit. Injury at birth so that, you know, it boosts up the healthcare system and quite possibly, you know, and frees up some more organs and teeth, right? Because, you know, when they get damaged children in the brain, some of them aren't as lucky as Amari. It's a hit and miss. It's like they said, we don't really know. But they also know that if they injure the brain at birth, there's a high probability that the baby will either die or be on feeding tubes and will for surely die soon enough than if they were born normal with no oxygen, like no brain, no brain damage due to lock, lack of oxygen. Like some of this stuff, people, is premeditated. It really is. And you have to ask yourself where it's coming from. Okay? If you've got, I don't want to say immigrant workers, but basically that's what it boils down to. Okay? Because the Canadian-born people are being replaced with immigrant workers from different countries. I'm not going to point my fingers at any particular country. Obviously, there's favoritism in there in some countries get, you know, more opportunity than other countries, right, to employ their people, or whatever it is, however these people end up out here. But some of this is premeditated. So, with that said, that's where, you know, like that video I did, with driving around in the community and pointing out monster home after monster home after monster home and putting out that question how do they how do they support themselves how are these individuals being able to pay for these houses never mind build them 
okay, when there's only so many jobs in British Columbia, Canada, to allow that to happen? Like, where do these people come with all this money and then be able to sustain themselves without gainful employment? outside of maybe laundering money through the illegal sales of vulnerable women's organs like Shemay. Right? And if the probability of that individual capitalizing from a situation like that is an immigrant, then the next question is, as a collective, is this what the Punjabi community supports? Right? The targeting of vulnerable families to provide organs on demand, basically, okay, so that they can live in their big houses, continue to exist in their own bubbles, thinking that it's never going to come full circle, even though their own people in their own country are beginning to starve because of the political agenda on a global sense, to which... Again, in British Columbia, Canada, everybody's in La La Land living a freaking fucking fairy tale, right? Thinking that it's never going to happen to them. And if that is the case, then that means that they're participating directly in it. And therefore, what I'm saying is true. True. So, it's not like you can go to the hospital and trust these people when you go there knowing what you know. Unless, of course, the people, whether they're Punjabi, whether they're Hindu, whether they're this, that, whatever, say no. Society itself should have integrity. And illegal organ harvesting is one of them. There is, should, you know, that should be dealt with people. But it, it props up those monster homes. Because it provides tax-free money. Right? And I'm just wondering how much the Punjabi community supports that. Being that they don't stand up really for anything. I don't... I have been waiting for years, people. Right? The one fellow that works with me, I don't know. I don't. I don't know why he feels that he can't help them to rise up to be the best that they can be, <laughs> right? right, in terms of if they had to choose between living in India under the conditions that India is now starting to face versus living in Canada in a bubble with <clears throat> No sense of social responsibility outside of just to retain what wealth they do have, right? And, you know, possibly accumulate a bit more, I suppose. But to what extent and to how much? When on the other spectrum, we know that global government is operating to... Uh, dismantle ideally all communities including the Punjabi community right for you know one world order agenda as well as a depopulation agenda to bring in that sustainable uh, rhetoric You know, people, uh, they don't think like that, people. They just, they live for the moment. So many people just live for the moment. They're very sheltered, extremely sheltered. So, I don't know. I Do I believe in the Punjabi community? Of course. Of course I do, because I, I know their power. I live within it. I know what they're capable of doing if they put their minds to it. I just don't see their minds put to anything outside of just waiting for the next direction from their uh, maybe quite possibly sell-out pastors, okay? And then I think that one day they're going to wake up and they're going to say, damn, what the fuck happened to us, right? We've been blindsided for all our, for all our, for all our faith. You know, and, it, and it's a real shame. 
that they would allow opportunity to slip through their fingers because, you know, they're not, they're trying not to rock the boat and hoping that they will escape the wrath of the satanic agenda that we've got in our communities right now. And if they're not going to escape it, then I guess they're a part of it and they actually push it forward. So I'm not, I'm on the fence with that one. Because I always do like to favor people by nature, have, you know, an innate goodness in them, right? Even though there's a lot of bad people out there these days, I still like to think that innately people do want to do the right thing, right? And I just don't know what it's going to take for the Punjabi community to stand up and do the right thing for, I guess you could say, the province, because by standing up for the province, then they stand up for their country. Because there's a lot of people from India in British Columbia, Canada, with more and more of them coming. And there's like over a billion people sitting up in freaking India. Some of them are boiling to death and can't wait to get the fuck out of there and want to come to Canada. But, you know, this is where the Punjabi community has to stop thinking in terms of, well, let them be in their fate. That's their fate. That's their lot. You know, we're not obligated to help them out of their lot outside of maybe the few that escape and come to Canada. But you know what? At some point, you know, that's not going to be, it's not a solution. Now, it will never be a solution in terms of... Um, walking that good line, right, in terms of, you know, being a good person on this planet. So that when you leave, you can say, yeah, you actually made a positive difference, right? Like, I just don't know where British Columbia, Canada is heading in. We're building these subpar freaking units, stack and pack units, right, that, like, I swear... All you have to do is Google the slums of, and a whole bunch of shit will come up, and you can see what Surrey's going to look like in 50 years from now from these stack and pack buildings, right? And the people that got rich off of the mayhem that those stack and pack buildings created will be long gone, unless, of course, they're computerized and they've got a mixture of dead body parts and machines all put together to recreate the individual who should have been dead 50 years ago, okay? Is that what the Punjabi community wants to be known for? Let's put, right, transhumanism. Isn't that taking a body and mixing it with machines? You don't think, they're not trying to take dead body parts and mixing them with machines, right? Of course they are, people. Which brings me to think of Shimei. You know, I sit here and I think, like, what the hell did they really do with Shimei? Did they really just take her teeth and her organs, or did they did more nefarious things after the fact, to which I think they did? Okay, I don't think it was just as cut and dry as, oh, we need a liver, oh, we need this, oh, we need that. No, no, they needed the whole thing. They needed the whole body. For what they're doing right now, in terms of this transhumanism and trying to hit, hook up people to some mine hive with their technology, with their satellites and all this shit, you know, got everybody addicted to their cell phones, uh, it's like, beep, beep, okay, stand up straight. Beep, beep, okay, I'll sit down. Beep, okay, I'll go left. Beep, 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 okay, I'll go right. I mean, what the fuck, eh? But that's pretty much what it boils down to in terms of how people are being manipulated. Right? So with that, you know, like, how, how long do you think people will be able to survive under those conditions? Like, where does it end? Right? People are so gullible. Where does it end, people? So, going now back full circle to, I'm not going to drag on with this, right? You know, I'm like, okay, you still got a few months to make a final decision. Right, you know, by ten more years, 
worth of opportunity, basically, for the Punjabi community to step up to the plate. Because honestly, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I'd do it, people. Nope. Because it's not going to come from me. I've, t I've said this. You go into my videos, you know, it's not... I wasn't born for that role. I was born maybe to, to write, you know, the blueprint. But that's all it is. It's just a blueprint. You know, things can change in a blueprint in terms of it doesn't have to be exactly like that. As long as it's similar, we're good to go, right? In terms of a mandate. But outside of that, you know... I'm just yakety yak yak to myself and my few friends, right? Sharing my woes <laughs> on a public website that doesn't necessarily uh, support my me, <laughs> right? <coughs> 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 so I'm putting the shout out to the Punjabi community. They need to reorganize. Yeah, and grow some real hair. Right? Okay, I'm talking real hair. I'm not talking just something that you can look at and say, oh yeah, okay. No, I want I want something that of substance, right? In terms of standing up for something. You gotta stand up for something, people. So, if I do the trademark, it will just be basically for India to start. We'll start with India. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to isolate it down to the Punjabi community. I'm just going to say India. India is in crises. I mean, every country is in crises. But, uh, oh, and this is where I'm going to end it in terms of crises, okay? Because now we've just invited the Congo into the mix, okay? And the reason I'm saying that is because... It's gonna be a long day. So, another metal that is magnetic it is one of those earth, uh, rare earth elements, rare earth elements. It's called coltan. And it's used in cell phones, laptops, and nuclear reactors, and it's magnetic. And it's found in the Congo, as well as, as, well as a few other countries. But it appears to be in mountain rock right, where the miners have to go right into the rock deep and find veins as if they were looking for gold, right, and it's mixed in with, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's cassiterite, cassiterite, okay, C-A-S-S-I-T-E-R-I-T-E, -E, which is a tin base element where they get a lot of their tin comes from this material here I guess this is tin but when they're mining for coal tan again they have to go deep into the mountain rock down wherever right pull out chunks bust up whatever carry and then they have to sift out the little uh, magnet pieces and then somewhere in there is castorite which they can still separate for tin. So people are coming into contact with call tan through the cell phones, the laptops every day. Okay. In an external sense, through a device. What makes it so special? I don't know. Why they feel they need to use it in cell phones and laptops? I don't know. Where it's located on the motherboard and the processing little chips and all? I don't know. I just know that 
people are being exploited in Congo because of this. Okay? They go, they eat beans once a day, right? They don't even wash their hands because there's no nothing around. They're on the mountain going deep, right? They work for pennies on the dollar because through the political system of the Congo over the last, we'll just say, 200 years or whatever it is, even longer than that, I guess Belgium was a key key country who exploited the resources and the people in order to sustain its own economy. And because of that, the African people of Congo are completely entrapped into slavery just so that people in the Western world can live in their bubbles with their cell phones and their laptops. While people in India are lucky to get beans as well because their country is going down through the same path via world economics that is uh, enslaving more and more people. So with that said, being that Canada is not in such dire straits, although I have always said since Uncle John, maybe even with Andre, welcome to the new Congo, right? Because we're already there in terms of that two-tiered society with the predator class, right? And then those that are subject to yadi 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 So I'm really wondering where the economy is going to go in the next 10 years and why it's going to go in that direction. I understand that I'm on low income and I didn't uh, have the opportunity to create personal wealth because I'm I you know I get told oh there's lots of people out there that have lots and lots of money it's not what you think not everybody's like you in terms of being poor yes granted that's true but at the end of the day a political agenda is a political agenda and if the agenda is to wipe out a large portion of the general population in terms of through sickness and disease and uh, lack of duty of care under that breach of trust contract that was written by our negligent governments to forfeit on their responsibilities to the general population in terms of that peace and liberty and prosperity and everything that they base their employment on in terms of what they are supposed to represent through their oath of ethics oath oaths o a t h s oaths of ethics within the systems that they work in Like, what is the world going to be like in 10 years from now? Is British Columbia, Canada going to be an oasis for Punjabis? Well, millions of their kinds, in terms of in India, with their ethnic heritage, perish. How long does the Punjabi community in Canada figure that they can hold on to their oasis? Because that's really what it boils down to. It's just an oasis. And I wonder if they're aware of that.
Do I believe that the Punjabi community can actually make a difference in Canada and worldwide? Yes, I do, people. What it's going to take to put the pep into their step, I don't know. I just don't know. That's where I live in a bubble. 